and welcome back to The Pin Man. I'm Mike West, and today our special guest is, and that's right, we have two for you. It's a two for a day, because when I bought these two pins, it was a two for one deal. Now, from time to time, I like to get pins from companies, kind of take a risk on pins that are from companies that we don't normally hear from. And today we're gonna to take a look at these two pins from the Daily Fountain Pin Company. Ugh, they got some good clips. <laughs> I have one here, this one's kinda of heavy, more of a, a thicker metal, I guess. And then I have this one. Okay, so, uh, We'll take a closer look at these pins, but the Daily Fountain Pin Company is a company uh, run by a husband and wife. As far as I can tell, I tried to get a little more information about them, but they, unfortunately, they didn't uh, answer my emails. But it appears that these companies are probably outsourced uh, to, um, to China, maybe, or Taiwan one of those uh, countries that, that produce inexpensive fountain pens. These normally retail for around $69, 60, $69. Uh, but I got a two for, and so I bought these two uh, different styles and I really like it. The fountain pen company also uh, sells journals, nice leather journals that come in three different sizes. They also have, of course, uh, pin pouches that, and uh, other um, pin cases that will help you take care of your pins. So again, I, I just want to highlight some companies, some options uh, for you, different styles of fountain pens. And as you see, as we uh, do the tour of these two pens, that uh, they're pretty, pretty nice. They have a, they have a unique uh, style uh, to them, though uh, this one has a clip that reminds me of another pin company. Anyway, but the but the pin style is is different. So, thanks for tuning in to the Pin Man. Don't forget to we'll transition now to the tour of the pin, then some size comparisons, as well as the writing sample, of course. So with that, we will see you on the other side. Alrighty, the Daily Fountain Pen came in this package. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Try to zoom in here a little bit. But there's a label underneath this that has a lot of I'm, I'm thinking, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that it's Chinese typewriting on the shipping label. And then it had this other label, uh, the, uh, apparently the shipper uh, put this, or somebody anyway, put this other label on it that um, said it comes from this other place in the US and to me. Okay, so it comes in this, basic uh, packaging. So I'm, I'm thinking, like I, like I said earlier, I'm thinking that this, um, these are Chinese made pens. They're a company, again, from these folks in Australia, but I'm thinking that they outsource uh, the pens uh, to uh, someplace in China. Uh, if, if I am wrong, and you you know I, I did ask the company they didn't uh, they haven't responded yet I, I don't think they're trying to be deceptive I just uh, figure that whatever they're um, busy whatnot okay so in the package comes these two coupons for thirty percent off all right and I I think that's pretty good because they not only sell fountain pens but they also sell some really nice looking looking uh, leather type journals uh, in, in different sizes. They have some big 
uh, I think A7, A6, and A5 size uh, journals. So eight and a half by 11, five by seven, <laughs> whatever, four by six uh, for, for the American uh, group there, I think is comparable. Anyway, 30% 30, 30 off, and this can be used for everything. Um, it says for a loyal customer, I've only bought two, so I'm thankful. And then it has these sheets that uh, the fountain pen instructions, and let's see, are they the same thing? They are the same thing. Okay, so anyway, it just shows you here how to uh, dip it in and things that, and how to use the converter. It doesn't show anything about the cartridge, but anyway, how to do the converter. So that's pretty good. I like it when they do that. All right, so I got these two packages here. Now the one here, um, it's just labeled as a, on the, on the website, it's called an SS50. And then here on the, the label, it is, it just says uh, silver, which is more of a, I would call it a gunmetal type. So you get this big wrapper here, get that out of the way for a second. Got the big wrapper here. Then you take it out of the pouch and you have the pen. So, it's a pretty nice pen. It is, like I said, it is heavy. One of the heavier pens, oops, <laughs> okay. It is a snap-on, snap-off. Now it's pretty tight, but it's has that has that kind of a cushiony type of clip. But it is tight. The grip is a nice size. It's probably probably around uh, 10 millimeters. Let me check. Right at the center of the grip. Yep. It's about 10 millimeters, and so it's a nice, nice size. The uh, body, you can see the length there on my hand. So it's pretty good. Now I, I don't mind metal, metal grips. They don't get slippery in my hands. Um, my hands aren't oily, but they're not real dry. So, and it would have a number five. Looks looks like a number five a size nib. If I compare it to the Diplomat Excellence A, which is about a number six nib, uh, so it's definitely at least a number five, maybe 4.5, I don't know. It's a small, smaller nib. Okay, so here we have it. This is the SS50. And again, uh, they call it a silver on the packaging, but it's like a guns, um, gun metal. And I like that, okay? The clipping mechanism is tight. It's a cushion one, but it is, but it is tight. I like the, the scroll on the, on the barrel. When you hold it in your hand, you don't really feel it. Now, the downside of this type of material is sometimes you get fingerprints on it. That's all right. Let's see. So the clip there, it's not a, it's not an average. I'd say it's average, not too tight, but it, it will go on your shirt well. Uh, the finial is just a flat, mostly flat, pretty much flat there. Uh, top there, a couple of bands. Nothing written on it. The body finial, again, is pretty basic. Up in there, okay, yeah, pretty basic there. Okay. And then we open it up. Yeah, the grip section there, 
again metal so if that bugs you then uh, if you don't like metal grips then you probably won't like this anyway there you go and there's your nib now, I, I I thought I had a pretty good uh, pretty nice nib on there it says Y-R-E-N, and it says uh, 22, 22 karat gold plating. So maybe yes, maybe no. But it's got a it, uh, lining. It's got a, uh, a steel with the gold around some of the scroll work there. I, I do think it's a nice looking nib, uh, you know. I never heard of that nib company so but anyway so I'm assuming they make their own nibs um, so here you have the feed you know just your basic feed and then open it up and it comes with a just a basic uh, converter but I'm glad it's an inexpensive pin. Uh, it, this would be an international uh, converter. It would take the cartridges as well. Okay. There you have the steel. Let's take a look at the other one. Now this one comes in another separate package and you open it up and it has the um, you know the pin in the package pull that out take a look at that in a minute what else is in here you see that there is a bunch of international standard long cartridges that was very generous of this company to give so much ink and it looks like it's all blue but and you also get this complimentary leather soft leather pen pouch I think that's a I think that's a nice touch. Now again, these are they retail for $69.99. $69.95 according to their website. Of course, the manufacturer's suggested retail price is $144, but uh-huh. I don't think anybody's gonna pay that much. Got this little opening there, and the pin, of course. Pin just fits nice and easy, almost too loose, but then you take that and you cinch it up and boy, you get your, have your pin nicely protected there. Okay, so let's take that out and take a closer look at the pin. On the little plastic paper, it calls it a red. On the website, it calls it a black. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a, if you take a look at this clip, it, uh, there's a big resemblance of a Parker pin clip. But other than that, it really doesn't show too many other similarities to Parker pins that I've been able to find. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that this is a uh, copycat at all. All right, so let's see. Get a closer look there at the clip. I think it's cool. This is a nice stealthy looking pen. And then there you have the cap. I, I don't know, I think it's kind of a classy cap there. The body finial is uh, just kind of basic, basic round. There's like a little kind of tip right there. If you can see that, it's probably sealed inside. I don't know if the hole was there for when they were machining this or what. Okay, and then on the band, as you can see, 
Who says Jin Hao? Yeah. Okay. So they do um, get these pens from some sort of Chinese, well, the Chinese uh, pen companies. So this is a Jin Hao uh, sold through the Daily Fountain Pen Group. Another snap cap. This is not as tight or as hard as the other one, the silver one. Comes off and you have a, let's call it steel, but um, it's, a, it's a lighter type and it comes on to, looks like a little, uh, another piece there. It's probably like a barrel that slips on to that. So it's all metal, but uh, it's not heavy. It's metal, but it's not heavy. Hey, take a, take a look at the nib. This is a Jin Hao. It's a, it's a black nib, which is kind of neat. Then it has a Jin Hao and the horse and rider there on it and the scroll. Nice looking nib. And this says fine. I thought I ordered a medium, but uh, hmm. Anyway, is what it is. But we'll see how it writes. Hey, you open this one up. What have we inside? Yes, another cartridge or a converter. I'm sorry. And uh, that's pretty cool that uh, this part too is um, is metal or is red, red metal. I like I, I like that combination combination of red and black. I just got an exercise uh, bike from Fit Nation. It is red and black. My wife didn't like it. She wanted she wanted uh, turquoise or something. <laughs> anyway, so there it is. Uh, it fits in your hand. I think it does a good job there. Will this post? Yes, it will. It does post securely, uh, but uh, it is somewhat. Weighted, I, I don't know, not not too bad. Seems like as you're writing in the writing angle, it would um, kind of move down toward the nib, so to keep the nib on the paper better. Okay, so I really I really like this this black and red style, black red clip. You got the little red band there, and then the red. Um, Red threads. All right. So I encourage you to get on the Daily Fountain Pen and check out uh, some of the other pins that they have to offer. Now, I don't. I don't know if you could find this uh, cheaper than. Let's see. I got it for. 30, let's say close to $35. Okay, so that may be expensive for a Jin Hao, but I think it's a, a well made, it's a well made pen. So it's not resin. It's got a, I like the weight of this pen better than the, the silver. I could uh, stand for it to be a little uh, larger as far as the, as far as the diameter of the barrel, uh, the body, and the, uh, let's see, what's the, the grip section is a tad bit over nine millimeters. So I would prefer it to be uh, larger than that. But like I said, I, I, can, I can deal with this. I'm getting used to those little bit thinner type of grips and it's really not that, that uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable at all for me, but if you like real fat grips, like you know, 12 millimeter grips, then uh, you probably wouldn't like this. But uh, still, still pretty good. Here you have some size comparisons. 
You have the Daily Fountain Pen steel, I guess you, you would call it, silver, the uh, SS50, and then you have the Daily Fountain Pen or Jin Hao RS70 black and red, and you have the Sailor 1911 compass and the Diplomat Excellence A. And here you have them unposted. And here you have them posted. That, uh, <laughs> that steel is going to be very heavy. Alrighty, now for a writing sample of the Daily Fountain Pen, or I guess this would be the Yairin Steel Gunmetal Fountain Pen. All right, so I'm going to call it Yairin. We'll say the, uh, call the, a little bit of hard start there. Daily Fountain Pen. Yairin S S fifty silver and this is supposed to be a medium. I don't know, I think they're calling this a fine too, so we'll go ahead and call it a fine, but I would say maybe a fine medium. And I'm using diamine. Blue black Okay, any kind of flex mm. Yeah, actually a little bit Just a tad but the the nib seems kind of soft but um, I wouldn't call it a flex nib of course uh, except for the First time I try to use it, there's no hard starts, no skipping. It is a smooth nib. I'm, I'm impressed with it. And as I'm writing, I'm really not sensing any discomfort with the weight. Let's see. So every direction, it's, it's a nice smooth nib. The, let's see, reverse writing. Good job. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. And that keeps flowing nicely as well. Uh, not scratchy at all. Maybe a little bit from right to left strokes. Um, just just a tad bit of feedback, uh, extra feedback than what you get otherwise. Uh, but no, nah, nice nice reverse writing. So if this is a fine, that'd be an extra fine. Does good. I'm in, I'm impressed. I like that. I like that nip. Okay, what else? Um, yeah. Okay. You like to do the smear thing? There you go. Uh, so it flows good. There's good flow, no hard starts, no skipping. Like I said, from the that one time. Now, if I set it down, is it going to do it? I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back to that. But um, so anyway, I had just inked it up prior to to doing this, so that could have been the reason. All right. So what do I think about? It? Let's try this this way. Okay. This. This is a huge pin if you want to cap it. But I, let's see. I mean, I, surprisingly, it, I don't notice it as being feeling too back weighted. I wanna move this lighting over here. Let's see how that, that works. Okay, so I don't really notice it being too back weighted. Um, it is heavy though. 
I don't, I don't know ounce wise. I didn't measure that, but it is heavy. But um, still, it's um, it's not bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and give this a. Uh, sort of smiley because it is it is heavy um, so I wouldn't want to use it I, I guess for long writing uh, sessions but um, yeah I think uh, I think that and the clicker uh, the clicking mechanism is a little tight now if you look at the swirls let's see I'll try to get down here the swirls, if you click it on there, right, they, they all line up. So that's good. Let's see, spin it that way. Can you see that? Okay. So I, I think the SS50, the gunmetal, I'm going to call it, is uh, it's pretty nice. I mean, really, it, it is a nice looking pin. So Yiren, Yiren pins. All right. Now we have the Jin Hao. And uh, we're going to call this the RS70 black or red and black. Uh, I like that it's a uh, matte type finish on this pin. Got the black nib. Nice kind of stealthy look to it. So, of course, we got to use some, uh, some red ink in this. So, here we go with the... Daily Fountain Pen. This is definitely a fine nib. And I'm going to say Jin Hao. Oh, smooth. What is it called? An RS70. So, oh. RS70. Black. And red. And this too is a fine nib. And here I'm using diamine red dragon. One of my favorites. Okay. Let's see. Nice and smooth. You know, some flex to where you can get some line variation, but you got to press down. Let's see. No hard starts, no skips. It just keeps keeps writing. There's that. How about reverse? A little little. Scratchy, if you will. Not quite as nice as the other one. But it keeps it keeps going. Keeps on going. I, I'm I'm impressed with that. Because I have I have worked with pins that do uh, reverse writing to begin with nicely, but then they start fading out pretty quick. All right. Well, let's see. How do I feel about this pin? And it is, let's see, let's uh, try it. Posted. Now, this one rides a little closer to my knuckle that, that I do notice it. And eh, not real crazy about that, but um, it's not back weighted at all. Right, well. Just keeps on going. Okay, so how do I like this Jin Hao RS70 Black Daily Fountain from the Daily Fountain Pen? I'm gonna go ahead and get a give it a full smiley because of the weight, the size. I like this. It's a it's a good writer. It's got a ni nice weight to it. Not as heavy as the. Uh, Yiren SS50. So, good job. Good job, Jin Hao. So, there you have the Jin Hao RS70 Black and Red. 
and with the smiley. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thanks again for tuning in to the Pin Man, and I hope this video was helpful to you as we looked at these two pins, these uh, really nice pins. I, I really like them. From the Daily Fountain Pen Company, one that you may or may not have heard of before, but now you have heard of it. So go check them out on dailyfountainpen.com. Don't forget to leave some comments about these pins. Maybe you have a couple of these pins, one or two, and would like to share your experience with the rest of the gang. And so uh, leave some comments below. Don't forget to, if you haven't already, and check out a couple of these videos. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day.